Hi, I'm Randy Turner, and I'd like to talk with you a little bit about the new book, 541 Stories from the Joplin Tornado. The book was written by Carthage Press Managing Editor John Hacker and me, and features not only our stories and essays about what happened on May 22, 2011 in Joplin, Missouri, but also the stories written in their own words of survivors of the tornado and people who came to volunteer in the days afterward. It was two days after the tornado that I began to realize the kinds of stories that would be featured in this book. Up to that point I hadn't thought of writing a book at all, but then when I took a Daily Beast reporter on a tour of some of the tornado afflicted areas, I began to see the kind of stories that would make up this book. We were, she had asked me to take her to Joplin East Middle School where I teach, one of the schools that was destroyed by the tornado. And we parked in the middle of Duquesne and were walking toward the school and there were, you know, electrical wires all over the ground and of course the power had been cut off to them but you still gingerly stepped over them because you didn't want to take any chances. And as we were going past the roundabout, on the first house on the right, we noticed uh, a man and his wife and their two kids going through uh, what had once been their house, looking for any kind of belongings they could salvage. And they had just found a picture of the wife's sister who had died a few months earlier, an irreplaceable memento. And after we talked with them for a few minutes, we heard this little sound, meow and they found a cat that they had they didn't know what had happened to the cat and so you know it was a really great thing for those kids but right after that they they mentioned something which kind of brought everything back down to earth again they had two cats and they had no idea where the other cat was and to this day I don't know if that other cat was ever found so we went on to East Middle School and and I can tell you, even though that building had been there less than two years, and I hadn't developed the kind of attachment to it that I had to South Middle School where I used to teach, it was still just horrific to see something that had been so full of life just two days earlier uh, just totally destroyed. And I looked at the gymnasium, and the walls were gone, and all you could see was the giant eagle on the back wall. And then I walked around the building, and... The auditorium had been what I considered to be the pride and joy of East Middle School, and it was there in, in rubble, and all you could see out of it was this little American, an American flag just barely sticking out of it. So we continued, and we went to the apartment complex behind the 15th Street Walmart, and I should say what had been the apartment complex, because... Uh, there was just a shell, just framework there. And I had heard through Facebook that one of my students, one of my eighth grade students, had, had not been located. And so I thought I would, uh, you know, kind of do two things at once and not only take uh, the reporter on the tour, but also try to find out if anyone knew what happened to my student. And I asked the first few people. And they did not know him, which is which is not uncommon in an apartment complex like that. People just, just don't know each other anymore. And then I ran into this uh, older man who uh, was with a woman whom I assumed to be his daughter, and they were taking belongings out of a ground-level apartment. And I asked him about my student, and, and he didn't know my student either, but he said that the apartment manager had said that there had been no one who was in the apartments at that time on Sunday who had been killed, that everybody was accounted for. And so I took that as just positive news about my student. And then in the next breath, he said, but my son was killed during the tornado. And, you know, I, I didn't know how to react to that. And it turned out the man's name was Terry Lucas and his son, Chris Lucas, had been the manager of the Pizza Hut who had received considerable notice on the news because he sacrificed his life saving the lives of customers and co-workers at the Pizza Hut. And so it was just like that. You would have something that was really positive and then you'd have it followed by something that was just totally tragic. 
and that's when I decided that that it was time to to just keep on telling these stories and I I got in touch with John Hacker who who had I had worked with at the Carthage Press several years earlier and uh, John as it turned out had had come to Joplin shortly after the tornado to check on the mother of a friend of his and while he after he got there uh, the first thing he did was not take his camera out and start taking pictures or grab his notebook and start writing down uh, people's thoughts he, he tried to help people he was trying to rescue people there and after that the you know after that the camera the notebook came out and those things are in the, that he found out in those moments right after the tornado are included in one of the most searing chapters in this book and it's, it's you know it's just people who who just could not comprehend what was going on and how something this horrific could happen and John really captures that well and he also has another story in there which to me has come to symbolize the reactions of the people of Joplin to the tornado and that was in his chapter about uh, an organization called Samaritan's Purse that uh, Franklin Graham, the son of uh, Reverend Billy Graham, is in charge of. And that organization uh, had one person after another, Joplin residents, come to it. Residents who had lost their homes and they were not coming there seeking handouts. They were not coming there seeking something for themselves. They wanted to know how they could help. They had lost everything, but their first thought was what they could do for someone else. And to me, that's the story of Joplin and the story that needs to be told after the May 22nd tornado. And those stories are included in 541 stories from the Joplin tornado. And we have just some, some wonderful stories that people contributed to us. We have the story of uh, one of my former students, Layla Zaidi. Uh, she and her entire family came to the United States from Pakistan and the whole extended family lost their homes and yet Layla has a positive outlook on things. Uh, her father, a doctor, was one of the heroes who helped at St. John's, our hospital that was destroyed that night. And then we have the story of Rose Fogarty who, who heard about Joplin High School senior Will Norton who lost his life and at first came here to hunt for them while they still didn't know what had happened to them and then has since stayed and has helped and has been involved in all kinds of charity and in rebuilding following the tornado. Uh, four of the chapters in, were written by, by former students of mine and they tell harrowing stories of things that, that happened to them. Uh, the 17 stories written by the people involved themselves and stories about the hospitals. St. John's which was hit by the tornado and the emergency room doctor there gives an account of that that is just uh, terrifying. Then we have stories from Freeman Hospital which was only a short uh, distance away but somehow managed to survive the tornado and then McCune Brooks in Carthage which also was involved and the people at Missouri Southern State University who also uh, allowed uh, their facilities to be used as a, as a form of a hospital there. There are so many heroes, so many stories. Joplin Fire Chief Mitch Randalls, uh, just, you know, all kinds of things about this tornado. The first draft of history is uh, what they call books like this and and I feel proud and I know John feels proud to have been involved in the writing of 541 stories from the Joplin tornado. The book also includes the complete text of the memorial service held one week after the tornado with the uh, speeches uh, from Reverend Aaron Brown whose church had been destroyed seven days earlier and from Missouri Governor Jay Nixon and President Barack Obama. We also have the National Weather Service's report issued in June about the tornado. And though we felt it was important to tell our stories and the stories of the survivors and the volunteers, 
it was just as important, maybe more so, to feature the stories of the 160 people who did not survive the Joplin tornado. So in the back of our book, we have complete obituaries of those people. We want this to be something that people can find useful, but also something that, that touches people, both with, you know, the positives that came out of this and, of course, the things that the people and, and things that we lost during the May 22nd tornado. 541 Stories from the Joplin Tornado can be found locally at Hastings Books, Countryside Flowers, Changing Hands Bookshop uh, in Joplin. It can also be found at the uh, McCune Brooks Hospital uh, Bookstore. It can be found at Pat's Books in Carthage. And for those of you who are not in this area, it is also available online through Amazon.com. It can be ordered through Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, and other internet sites. I ask you to give this book a try. Please let us know what you think about it. Again, the name of the book is 541 Stories from the Joplin Tornado. Thank you for letting me have a little bit of your time.